in Oklahoma, drawing oil from the earth is nothing new. It's the fifth largest producer in the United States, and the oil and gas industry brings tens of billions of dollars into the state economy each year. But lately, there have been some earth-shaking developments. It sounds like a sonic boom. It feels like the apartment is just going to shift right off the foundation. It'll toss you and then toss you back to where you were. Earthquakes here used to be rare, about one a year. But over the last six years, the number has shot through the roof. In 2013, there were 109 quakes over 3.0 magnitude. At the current rate, 2014 could see that triple. You know when you grew up here, this isn't normal. They have coincided with the rise of fracking to extract oil and gas from the ground. There were seven more earthquakes today. I've been invited to a meeting in Stillwater at the home of Angela Spots. Residents here are trying to figure out how to counter these unsettling developments. We've had stuff fall off the wall. We've been here when every picture on this wall shook and went sideways. You're just bombarded with noise, sound, dust, dirt. Um, I personally feel it's very dangerous. And unfortunately, it's going to be years before the rest of the whole country figures that out. So far, we haven't had any cracks in the ceiling, but I can feel the difference in the floor. I wish people understood how much energy is consumed to bring all that energy up out of the ground with all the risk. How confident are you that you can unsettle this Leviathan because it, these are the jobs, right? This is the economy in Oklahoma. Is that your biggest challenge here? <laughs> I think so. I think it is. Our governor's top three contributors are energy companies. Hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, is the process by which water, chemicals and sand are injected into rock to dislodge pockets of oil and gas. That wastewater then has to be disposed of, either by dumping it into evaporation pits or by re-injecting it into the ground. It's this reinjection process that a study conducted by the U.S. Geological Survey and several American universities has linked to the earthquakes. The earthquake increase is unprecedented in Oklahoma. Barbara Beckins is a research hydrologist with the USGS and co-authored that study. Injection has occurred in Oklahoma for many decades. It's uh, what may be relevant is that injection has doubled in the same time frame in the state. So injection rates have been increasing as these unconventional oil and gas uh, technologies have been increasing. Across the state, the boom in fracking is causing friction between the industry and landowners. I'm about to go see Earl Hatley. He's been an environmental activist for decades and is a big opponent of fracking and wastewater injection. That looks like a wastewater injection mm. well, right? Mm. That's being blamed for the earthquakes. And how many earthquakes have we had in this area in recent times? Oh, God. Hundreds. Earl has been hearing from oil companies who want to explore for oil on his land. In January, I got a letter from a contractor on behalf of Devon, they had a contract with the letter. They wanted to come onto my property and do a seismic survey, explore for oil, and I just threw it away. If they find oil, the companies may not have to ask for permission to extract it. In Oklahoma, mineral ownership is separate from land ownership, which has tipped the balance in favor of the big oil and gas companies. So you're saying they can do what they want, really. How do you fight such a big machine? In Oklahoma, that's a difficult thing. You have to be brave and you have to be willing to take whatever they throw at you. For more than a month, I'd been requesting interviews with the top oil and gas companies. So now I'm going to try to show up on the front door and see if they'll talk to me. Hi, Gordon. We're doing a piece on the wastewater injection in Oklahoma. I uh, would really appreciate if you could find the time. Thanks a lot. No one answered, but the Oklahoma City police arrived soon afterward. 
Who was it you were supposed to meet with? Uh, well, I'd sent multiple requests to Gordon Pinoya. Sir, put the camera back in the car. Well, anyway, you guys ain't allowed back out here now. We got a similar response from Devon, the fifth largest natural gas company in the country. So we were wondering if we could get a line from Devon. No. Uh, <laughs> like anything on camera. Is she recording? So I was just at Devon Energy Center, the biggest building in town. I went in, chanced my luck. They threw us out. When we started researching this story, this man got in touch. He drives the trucks that carry millions of gallons of used water from the fracking sites to where it is disposed of. Unlike the oil companies, he wanted to talk, but asked us to hide his identity. What am I seeing over here? This is a reservoir where they dump their frack trucks at. Farmers and landowners can just dig a hole and charge people to unload their frack trucks here, the dirty water that they've used to well, frack. I thought the dirty water goes, gets pumped underground. In the injection wells, they do. But this is another way of disposing of frack water. You just come out here, dig a hole, charge people to uh, back in and unload. He's worried about more than the earthquakes and fears that reckless dumping of chemical-laced wastewater into these pits will contaminate the groundwater. There's not even a tarp out here. This is just ground to water. The state's making a lot of money out of this. You think they're going to care or do anything about it? I don't think so. I think that it's good for Walmart. It's good for the gas stations. It's good for everybody to have this kind of money coming around. And uh, I don't think anybody's going to say anything until the groundwater's gone and you have to go somewhere else to get water. In Norman, Oklahoma, a town hall meeting has been organized to discuss the local impact of fracking with support from the Sierra Club, a national environmental group. We've done our best to make sure that everyone can not only hear, but do have also the opportunity to uh, at least submit their questions. Both supporters and opponents of fracking showed up, from environmental activists to hardline conservatives. The room filled up early, leaving many frustrated outside. I work for a living like a lot of people don't. I work in the oil and gas industry. I've been doing it for over 45 years. First of all, huh? relax. You're no. Right. Hey, it has to do with my livelihood, man. They have no idea what fracking is. None. To keep tempers from boiling over, the audience was asked to submit their questions in writing. You know, all this talk about potentially banning fracking, is this something that you see as possible here in Norman? Could, could Norman do this? Is it considering it? First of all, as I'm going to show you, there's a state statute that specifically contemplates that charter cities, at least, have the ability to both regulate and prohibit the industry. Thank you. Yeah. The general public, in specific parts of the public, they overreact to things they don't understand. And they, uh, and then, and... Well, it's not an overreaction if you're ground shaking underneath you. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now let's, we're talking about fracking. Now talking but isn't wastewater injection part of the big picture? Outside the forum, I finally got to speak with oil industry representatives. You guys don't believe the study has any legs to stand on? The study believes that it could be linked. Okay. The study does not say that causality and correspondence are the same thing. There are corresponding things that have happened. Yeah, but surely but we it's a don't red know flag. That. You've got to go, OK, let's look at this now. Well, right? there are yes. other corresponding things, yes, right. such as the massive major earthquakes occurring over the world at the same time that are directly relinked to what's happening in Oklahoma. So where is the anti-fracking hysteria coming from? It's not based on science. It's true that scientists haven't so far established that the injection of wastewater produced by fracking is causing the exponential rise in earthquakes in Oklahoma. But earthquakes are a problem. The future of the fresh water supply is a concern. That there's a correlation between fracking and both is proven. Yet so polarized are the positions here, and so massive is the oil and gas industry, that even if science does establish a causal link, I'm not sure this battle will stop at all.
they're going to make as much money as what they can while they can make it without being regulated. Want more? Download the AJ Plus mobile app and join the conversation. Available in your app store now.